upgrading the electric grid in Vermont to handle the lofty power goals of the state's future. And much of those upgrades will be on the backs of grid operators. Channel 3's Kevin Geis is back after checking in with Burlington Electric Department. Kevin, what comes next for the state's largest city? Kat, Christina, upgrades come next. Burlington is chasing a net zero energy goal by 2030. Ambitious by many standards, but something Burlington Electric Department believes with, is within reach. Largely because investments now will make the energy transition easier. Warren McDermott is one of many electric vehicle commuters in Burlington. He needs an electric charger giving him juice to get home. Finding that EV plug-in, though, at times can be a challenge. Um, it's gotten harder for sure. There are more and more electric cars, which is great, uh, but there's also more competition for the chargers. Bringing online more chargers means more cars can plug in and more electricity being used. Burlington is electrifying. And as that transition happens, the city's utility wants it to be seamless for residents. To make sure that as we are growing the use of electricity, uh, that we have a grid that can manage that reliably. Since 2017, when Burlington committed to a net zero energy goal, Darren Springer says electricity usage has only grown. For example, we've gone from a handful of electric vehicles riding around the Queen City to an estimated 600, and from under 50 electric heat pumps to over 900. Currently, Burlington uses about 60 to 65 megawatts at peak times. The system's cap is about 80 megawatts. But as we creep closer to that 80, Burlington Electric is working on increasing the cap to 90 megawatts through investments in infrastructure. And we're investing millions of dollars in upgrading the grid uh, to make sure that we have that headroom still as the load grows. That means new electric panels, transformers, substations, lines, and software. The money coming from a revenue bond voters approved in 2021. On top of upgrades, Burlington Electric Department is also looking at load management. Different strategies for different technologies. Like adjusting temperatures on heat pumps a few degrees to save a few electrons. Or saving money and electricity by charging electric vehicles during off-peak hours. A program McDermott wouldn't mind, because an electrified Queen City sounds like a future he would benefit from. Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. It'll make uh, commuting a lot easier. Burlington also passed on town meeting day a carbon fee for buildings over 50,000 square feet that choose to continue to heat with fossil fuels after heating system upgrades are necessary. Burlington has about 80 of those buildings, and even if all of those were switched over to electricity tomorrow, Burlington Electric tells me they estimate we still would not hit capacity. According to the sustainability director for the utility, most of these investments are to increase resiliency and ensure we have ample cap space on the grid for whatever power needs come our way. In the studio, Kevin Guys, Channel 3 News.